on the previous episode. He's going to get out of here. So that's going to be the end of this episode. Now looking ahead to Legend Saturday, I would say really look to buy training and invest because training is probably going to go up from Saturday. What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel, episode 39 of the No Money Spent. Let's not waste any time. Let's hop into today's content. We got a Roy Williams 91 overall powered up to a 92. Only 90 speed, but he does have 91 zone coverage and 92 whip power. I think a little too overpriced in terms of you can get Brian Dawkins for 180 and Sean Taylor for about 270 right now. Basically, just it's a better version of a Roy Williams. Roy Williams is about double the price. The other card being a Curtis Martin 92 overall halfback or 91 powered up to 92 pats and jets steam team roy williams i think is Bengals and cowboys but curtis martin an elusive back 91 speed 90 change of direction 92 break tackle a pretty good card the best probably elusive back now in the game but in terms of meta running backs i'd still say reggie bush is the best because he does have that receiving back arch archetype now the solos the corresponding solos you are going to get the curtis martin and the roy williams power up as well as the 84 overall choice pack we are going to end up taking Taking Roy Williams. We're going to take that Roy Williams, Mike Haynes, and next week's 84 nap from Solos and probably put it in to an 85 86 overall exchange pack. Now, going back into Friday night, this was last night. I went fully liquid into my heavyweights. Like I said, going into Saturday, you want to have all your heavyweights sold because it, there's a chance that they end up going down. We're going to go fully liquid, but instead of like doing more heavyweights trying to rip them friday night sell them before the saturday morning we ended up doing a bunch of get a player pack met well the get a player method basically because we need more gold cards for team diamonds next friday and we're gonna get a couple of good pulls in being joe thune you see 35k sold so i'm gonna list one up for 24 that actually does sell as well as putting the low silvers into the superstar low exchange set i'll probably go into that more in detail in tomorrow's episode as i will be doing more get a player packs but saturday morning hits it's buy time in terms of training now step one of buying training is finding the best like card to buy and quick sell now that could be 85s for 25k 87s for 53 or 88s for 70 as well as 89s for under 112 if you want to hit that 35 coins per training now the 85s were getting sniped and the 87s had a lot of competition in terms of snipes so we basically pivoted to the 88 overalls and 89 overall legends mostly buying them for under 76 and under 112 respectively step two of turning training or then training buying at the lowest you have to find the best rate in turn training into coins and of course right now we know that to be the heavyweight pack being two w's and three l's and then the final step of turning training investments into actual coins is you have to find the right time to actually sell off your heavyweights there's a time to there's a time to sell and there's a time to hold and you're going to see the 88 overalls this morning we're going for a really good price of 90k i was basically trying to sell off every single one at 90 sometimes even 92 and 93k which was really good as well as montez sweat was going for about 165k which is just really good if you're doing the pack at 35 coins per training but you're gonna see jack conklin however was kind of down at about 135k 138k but you're gonna see we wait a couple hours and jack conklin ends up going up to about 160k that's what you need to do patience in terms of selling you don't need to flip right away in terms of if you want to make back the most on your l packs and your w packs wait until the price of the card is at a reasonable price for you to sell and we're going to go into the heavyweight method and why it works i think the most commonly asked question is if this price is this and this price is that does the method still work now for an example we're trying to get training at 35 coins per training which will end up being a 94.5k per pack sniping though you're probably going to get more closer to 91 now if we pull four packs all at 91k and we pull only one w three l's which i'd say is the typical basically the worst batch of four you can do you can get all four w's three w's two w's but most likely you are going to get one w but in this instance and why this method is so good is we can pull four packs and with the pack being 91k and selling the l's at 90k it ends up being a 10k loss per l so we're able to pull basically five packs one w breaks even getting one w in four packs ends up being a profit as you see of about 18k which is what makes it worth it now in terms of when i would slow down on the method would probably be when you need when you're required or say to pull a sweat or a conklin one in every three 
let's say training goes up to 37k but the heavyweights themselves kind of hold their price and stay so we're selling still williams at 88 or 88 williams at 90k spain 90k sweat at 155k and we end up pulling let's say three packs it costs 100k per pack now that 37 coins per training is the price it ends up being 300k for three packs and we're only able to get back basically 300k pulling one w in three packs you can't force yourself or force the luck into one w every three packs it's just a rate that's not going to be i don't know consider like you can hit it you can hit two out of three you can hit one out of three every time but you can't rely on getting a w in one every three or one every two packs that's what i would say it would slow down so you're going to have to take out the calculator when you want to see if the method still works and look for that one in four w packs to break even and even better than one in five w's so make sure when you are getting an l pack necessarily l pack you were only losing Losing, I'd say under 15,000 really 15,000 or less on the L packs and man I would spam those packs but anything over 15k you start to lose like 20k per L pack and it ends up forcing you to pull a Conklin or sweat one every three one every two packs slowed down but the other way now you can basically battle this by being really patient and maybe listing your cards up like at 5k more than your lowest buy now try to get lazy buyers overnight and you're going to see the sells of the day basically for the heavyweights what i was selling you're going to see it started out at about 93k for the 88s went more down to around the 89k range but the conklin and the sweat sweats i was basically selling my limit or my what I want to sell them at minimum is about 150k right now as seen as in the get a player packs you see these superstars I'll show you that method basically in tomorrow's video as well as the the power-ups that I pulled DK Metcalf Joe Thune and a couple other of uh, power-ups you see the priest homes from yesterday I kind of had to take the L and just sell them for 20k I wanted to get fully liquid going into Saturday and then of course all the training things that we bought today mostly being 89 overalls for 110k or 112k or less we did get a Reggie Bush for 250 as well as a couple ultimate kickoffs for 25k but most of our purchases purchases were 88 for around 60 76k or under with a lot of them as you see on this little row of five we got a bunch for 70k which made the pack 33 coins for training which made the heavyweight pack like almost 89 to 90 K to the point where I was only losing 7 or 8 K per L pack I made a lot you're gonna see in the coin total I end up if everything sells I end up being at 3.5 mil we started at 3.2 mil so basically 300 K profit for a half days of heavyweight work and I really wasn't on that much hopped on 2k for a little bit but we're gonna go back in time to Friday night we end up matching up against PA counter go who I played I might have a video in one of my previous years I I played him last week in a really close game we ended up winning and this is going to be a shootout dog fight we are going to start with the ball though still rocking the cardinals uniforms i need a reminder to switch i want to roll with the raiders i love the Raiders. even as a chiefs fan i gotta respect good uniforms when i see them i'm prime trying to rock the raiders jerseys probably for the second half of weekend league but our opponent is going to come out and if you know what pa counter go is it is a play out of gun trips tight end so that's the formation our opponent is going to be running and he's going to be looking to hit this kyle pitts kind of seam route to beat my base cover three defense he's going to tie the game up at seven all coming back on offense so a third and ten to hit joey galloway on the double post to keep the drive alive and then eventually first and ten a check down to reggie bush and man joey galloway having a drive a great block on the outside corner gets us up seven our opponent now in probably the toughest downs he's had fourth and one Vince Young in the pocket is going to roll out, not roll out, check down to the left. You notice I did man up that slot receiver. If I kept my hard flat purple on the left side, it probably would have been stopped. But eventually on first and 10, he's going to run a curl route to the right. As I was running Mabel on both sides, the curl route's killers if you have no yellow zones on the field. It's going to tie it up at 14-14. You see two minutes or one minute left in the second quarter. He does get ball half, so we're going to try to chew clock as much as possible. And on this first and goal, you see he has three timeouts. I'm actually just sitting in the pocket to waste time. I went from 28 seconds down to 16. We're just going to run, take the sack, call a timeout, and we basically are going to have two plays to score a touchdown or settle for three. We just don't want to let him get the ball back with gun trips tight end being a really deep passing type of offense. But we're going to check down to Reggie Bush, and he's really going to make a couple people miss their tackle to go up 21 to 14 going into half. And our opponent is going to get the ball one stop needed for this game. We're going to send a little more pressure, going to have the tight end manned up so I don't have to cover that with my user. We finally get pressure, pressure and accurate throw, K-9 
Cam Chancellor with with the interception, and that is the break we needed. 21-14 now, up 7 on our first or second, no, third and 12. We are going to keep the streak out on the flood of the left side, and we're going to hit Calvin Johnson. He must have put one of his deep blues in a purple or a yellow zone, but our opponent is going to come back first and 10. A very fast drive, as you see. It's still 30 seconds left in the third quarter, and it's already 20-14. to He's going to make it 28-21 to on the scramble by Vince Young. Got caught in man, co man coverage, did not have QB contains. Now the game changing play. Second and one. You're going to see my tight end is on delay fade. Going to roll out left. Hit the tight end delay fade but he kind of runs into Eric Fisher our left tackle and Derek Thomas out of all people is going to get the interception. So he's going to capitalize off that turnover. Tie the game up at 28-28 and now my brain here had a little bit of a miscalculation. You see two minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. We're going to put Calvin Johnson on a streak like that one touchdown previously. We're going to throw it to him. We have him wide open. I should have just possession caught it and went down and he would have been forced to use his timeouts and the game would have been all but over if we would have gotten one more first down but I'm just going to score kind of uncharacteristic of me I pride myself on really good clock management but we're going to need one stop you're going to see in the first play I don't know how we don't get that sack Vince Young gets out and again, on second down, Vince Young basically throws Sean Taylor to the crowd, rolls out to the right, and finds a man open. I thought at this point I was not meant to win this game, not meant to get a stop. A couple plays later now, 43 seconds left. I'm going to be sending dogs playing really aggressive defense as I'm okay with him scoring. I have three timeouts, 40 seconds left. I should be able to get a score, but third and two, 22 seconds left. I've already burned my first two timeouts, and we're going to take a sack, forcing kind of a fourth and 11. I didn't really want to punt him the ball back with him having three timeouts, only needing a field goal. So kind of a risky play. We're kind of just going to go for it, but we're not really playing to win. I don't know. This wasn't really a well-played game for me, but we are going to pick up the first down. But unfortunately, we weren't able to get anything. Luckily, we win the toss. I'm about, I think I'm 5-1 and one or 6-1 and one in OT tosses. But you know, when we get the ball here, this guy really hasn't had much any type of pressure to stop my offense and eventually we're going to drive down the field a playmaker to Reggie Bush and eventually third and one going to hit Reggie Bush on the low ball possession catch to get us the W to move to 5-0 and weekend league going for that top 100 weekly as well as top 100 monthly but that's going to be the end of this episode don't be afraid to subscribe like and comment if you have any questions Remember, training and heavyweights, like if you bought training and you've bought heavyweights, you invested, sell before Tuesday. You want to have basically coin, all your coins back, liquid coins of any investments, probably by Monday night. It, but especially make sure you sell Monday night and have all liquid coins by Tuesday morning for Team of the Week where there is another buy window. But that's going to be all for this episode. Until next time, peace.